self-evident and objective. Yeah. Well, you, do you think self-evident entails objectivity? Uh, no, I no, I don't. I think it is self-evident and objective. Not not th those things don't like correlate. Ooh, so you're saying that is that logic exists mind independent. So like if you removed all uh, conscious experience from the world, from the universe, logic would somehow be in the realm of like mass and energy. Yeah. Well, then, I think I logic not. is a Platonic thing. Well, you know, like I guess form, I would. Right? I guess I would ask you a empirical proof for the Platonic realm then. I want to finish. Of the Platonic realm, mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying the Platonic realm exists. I'm just saying that um, a similar concept to what would be considered a Platonic form, it would fit the description, right? Mm, what do you mean by that? I think numbers fit the description of being uh, similar to Platonic forms, if you understand the concept of them. I think that, well, are you trying to say, I mean, for example, we can agree that uh, numbers or mathematics is a priori, but a priori doesn't necessarily mean, like, objective. It just means, like, innate. Like Kant, when he derived those terms, he, uh, he meant in an anti-realist sense, not in, like, an objective <laughs> sense. Um, I think logic exists and it's true, um, regardless of whether or not, um, we observe that, right? Well, but then I could, like, well, then that could be, like, well, I think that a unicorn dancing at the end of the universe is true and not, and just assert that with no evidence. So, like, you could do Hitchens Razor. What it was, what's asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence, right? <laughs> Um, well, you agree that any of those debunks that you, um, be trying to make would be reliant on the, them being the debunks, right? Sorry, beat that again. Okay, any of the things that you're using to debunk, um, the claim that logic is true self-evidently would also, um, have to follow the law of identity, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. So if the law of identity wasn't true, then those also cannot be true, right? Well, I didn't say it wasn't true. I just that I just didn't say it. I just don't think that it's objective. I don't think so I, I think... don't think all all um rules of logic are objectively true. I think that the law of identity and the law of non contradiction are, however. But see, that's the thing. You would have to prove these you would have to prove these epistemic norms exist somehow. Like do they because when you say something's objective it's like saying it in the same way that mass and energy are objective, right? So theoretically, you would kind of find some type of epistemic uh, beliefs in, like, atoms, for example. But, that, it's, but any, those are... Any, like, thing that goes against the law of identity would be reliant on itself to exist, right? Yeah, so that, that's just saying that's an axiom. And self-evidence, so saying something self-evident is fine, but then it takes another step to say something is objective or that's mind-independent. That's I've, so you can say something self-evident without asserting its uh, existence objective of the mind. Hold on. <clears throat> if I define objective, it says not influenced by personal feelings or opinions in considering and representing facts. Yeah, that so there's so it's in the philosophical sense. So there's so there's objective, right? So like I can say something like, well. Um, my news reporting is objective, meaning that I don't have any type of bias in how I'm interpreting the facts. But in a philosophical sense, when you're talking, uh, objective is referring to something being mind independent. So if it exi exists outside the mind, for example, I would say mass and energy exists outside the mind. And then stuff that is mind dependent, right? So something like morality or, uh, you know, your epistemic yeah. terms, like logic. Do, do you think that um, logic is dependent upon the mind to exist? Yeah. Um, do you think that mathematics is dependent upon the mind to exist? Yeah. Why? Why do I think that? Yeah. Um, well, if we're assuming, right, the normal stance in science that conscious states are correlated to brain states, right? They are they they arise through materialistic um origins and that means removal of the material, which is like the brain, would then follow by the removal of any concepts derived from the brain or the mind in itself. So 
That's why. So mathematics is derived from the mind. So removal of the mind would necessarily be removal of mathematics. Ma mathematics and logic shouldn't depend upon the mind to exist. The mind depends upon logic to exist. The mind well, depends uh, upon being the mind to exist. Do you agree with that? Uh, the mind depends on the brain. The, the brain de depends on being the brain to exist. Do you agree with that? Um, sure. I mean, the brain... I mean, I'm not saying okay, this, the so brain is somehow... That, that, that proves that, that it relies upon the law of identity, which means that logic exists regardless of whether or not the mind or the brain exists. Wait, how does that entail that it proves the law of identity? Because the, you're saying that the, the mind and um, the brain... Like, the law of identity is reliant on those things, but those things are reliant on themselves to exist. Which means they are also reliant on the law of identity, since they rely on being themselves. Wait, wait, so there's a difference between um, a classification of something, right? So I can, I can use the law of identity to make classifications, right? The difference between saying that and then saying an objective statement about um, what's the relations of two objects? I mean, even fundamentally, you can't make an objective statement about two objects in, in general. You have to start from a subjective... I'm, I'm not making an objective statement about two objects. <clears throat> I'm well, making that's... an objective statement that says that um, one thing is itself. One equals one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the mind equals the mind, right? The brain equals the brain. Sure. These things um, prove that the law of identity allows for the existence of things like the mind and the brain, and not How the so? other way around. How so? Because those things rely on being themselves to exist, which pr proves but they fall under the law of identity. Or it just shows that we pragmatically decide the law of identity to categorize those things. Because when it comes to the definition of truth, right? The we don't decide the law of identity. That, that implies we, that decision yeah, we, is more fundamental than the law of identity. Um, well, we could use, there's innate decisions and there's conscious decisions. Okay, right, things like innate and consciousness innate. All also rely on being themselves to exist. Well, well, actually, innate, well, the problem is that when you have innate concepts, right, those are concepts that are more unconscious. I mean, in essence, all concepts derive from the brain. If you want to say that, then that's fine. No. But and I don't all understand. I don't, don't necessarily well, derive from the brain. Can you prove that? Well, then you would have. Well, then if you're saying if you're saying that some concepts don't derive from the brain, then you need to assert, assert some empiricism to show that concepts derive mind independent. And if you say the platonic realm, yeah. then you would need to assert some type of evidence for the platonic realm. <clears throat> no, I'm not saying the platonic realm. I'm saying that um, concepts are pl like platonic, as in they aren't reliant upon our observation for them to exist. Oh, so observ well, so so I, you don't need observation for something to be mind dependent, right? So a priori knowledge, right, is something that's not necessarily done from experience, but that still is mind dependent. They're just innate ideas that derive from evolution. Okay, um, but things like innate ideas in general still rely mm -hmm. upon the law of identity to exist. No, the so okay, so so there's three definitions of truth. Basically, right? So there's the, the correspondence definition of truth, right? Which is whatever corresponds to reality, blah, blah, blah. Then there's the pragmatic definition of truth. So, what really uh, humans rely on is the pragmatic definition of truth. Whatever works for, our, for us to interact in the world must be true. Uh, certain scientific theories like Newton mechanics, for example, has a certain truth value to it because it helps us to a certain degree of explaining the world. Then you have general relativity, right? So, the law of identity is just an epistemic norm that we have that helps us. Um, you know, see and act in the world, right? So it, it doesn't, so you, so your statement that it's somehow proving itself isn't necessarily true, which is our classification as, um, as, 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 as classification of looking at objects in space and time. It's not just a classification of looking at objects in space and time. I don't even know why you said space and time at the end. It's oh, just okay. space and time are more fundamental than the law of identity. They're definitely. Well, the reason. Well, the thing is, the thing is that space says space and time is because we can only interact within space and time, and the only and the idea of a platonic realm sounds very queer to the idea of space and time. So, right. well, 
Oh, Plato also had Platonic space and Platonic time, but I'm not going to get into all that. <clears throat> but Plato was very... I mean, he was challenged a lot. Plato, did, Plato didn't believe in his own theory either. He just thought yeah. it was cool. Yeah. He didn't <laughs> on it. Nobody could refute him, but he still didn't believe in it even then. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm using it as an analogy. I, I, I'm not saying I believe in the Platonic realm either. But I am saying that um, things do exist conceptually outside of our observation, which are so, synonymous to Platonic concepts, right? So where is that? Then, then you have to give some type of empiricism that they do exist outside of our consciousness, right? Because well, other, otherwise it would be just an assertion. Like I said in the last debate, can you prove that um, after we all die that everything will cease to exist? Um, well, I don't necessarily think that we would all cease, well, everything would cease to exist if we all die. But proving, I mean, you can't prove either or, right? So I can make the argument, for example, right, that you view everything from your conceptual scheme. Therefore, everything defined in your conceptual scheme goes away once your conceptual scheme goes away. There I can make a case that for some solipsism case where, like, for example, okay. you know, nothing exists. I'm not, I'm not saying that, uh, by the way, I'm not saying that that's the position I hold. But I, you can't make a, dis you can't make a, a, pure decision one way or the other is what my point is. Yeah, I'm aware. When, when we normally determine things, we use um, specific um, axioms that we go by. That um, Assumed axioms, what, right? What's fair to, yeah, I know. I know. That's why I said what's fair to assume and whatnot. That's mm -hmm. what I was about to say. Um, all, all of these things, irregardless, still rely on the law of identity. Even, even things outside of assumption still rely on the law of identity. Sorry, say that one more time. I didn't hear you well. I said all, all of these things, irregardless of assumption or, or leaving out assumption, um, they still rely on the law of identity to exist. So, But then that's an assertion, though. Like, what's the evidence behind it? It is an assertion. You can't say that any of those things exist unless they are themselves. Well, I can give you empirical evidence that concepts derive from the mind. Well, good enough ones. I mean, okay. scientific claims. If you, say they're, if you say they stem from the mind, then um, you'd have to prove that the mind could exist without being itself. No, I wouldn't have to. I would just say the mind. So, so, every, so modern science is built off of physicalism, which is that the mind is derived from the, from the material. Sorry, the, the mind is derived from the material. I'm aware of what material. physicalism is. Can you yeah, prove so that physical, I don't... physicalism can exist even conceptually without being itself? But at the base of everything is axiomatic, but that's not the, really the point here, right? The point is whether we're using, uh, using our epistemic norms, right? That's how we derive knowledge. So um, are, we, are, we, are we justified in believing I, I, I don't necessarily have to use those norms. They also rely upon the law of identity. No, the law of identity is an epistemic norm. You can't, you can't not use the law of identity. It's impossible. I'm you aware can't you can't not use the law of identity because we can't even communicate without the law of identity. Like, Well, yeah, that's us, though. But uh, you understand, though, that doesn't mean necessarily it's objective. That just means it's self-evident to us. Yeah, well, and, and any challenges to the law of identity even being not objective also fall under the law of identity. Yeah, so I can... So it does... So, so Here's the problem. I'm not asserting that it doesn't exist. I'm just saying it subjectively exists. So I'm not asserting that it's necessarily a uh, non existent Activity itself also relies upon the law of identity. Okay, that's fine. And the problem, that even, you can say anything within the conceptual scheme. I'm not denying the existence of the conceptual scheme. I'm just denying in what way it exists. That's the difference okay. here. But, but the, mind, uh, the mind is still... Like, even if you're saying all these things just exist as concepts... The, uh, and and you're saying concepts only exist within the mind. Mm -hmm. um, the law of identity. The mind still relies upon the law of identity, so it's not how? just purely conceptual. Wait, it's how the does the mind rely on the law of identity? Because the mind has to be itself to be the mind. But that's not the law of identity, though. It is that's the law of fair. identity. So the law. No, no, no. The, necessarily, the law of identity is just our classification of of objects and its no, relation. It's right? not just our classification because the law of identity will exist regardless of whether we even classified it. Like. And again, if you say that, then you need to prove that epistemic norms exist outside the mind, which we have no empirical evidence. Okay. Uh, things like epistemic norms and things like even even you asking me to prove that epistemic norms exist outside of the mind also rely upon the law of identity. Yeah, and I just explained, though, you can use your epistemic norms 
to to pursue this. I mean, everything derives from our epistemic norms. I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm saying they subjectively exist. That's the whole point. Oh. And I say they're subjective. You, you wait, wait, wait. I say, I say, wait, 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 one sec, one sec, one sec. I say they subjectively exist because from the knowledge that we have derived, which shows that what our mental states usually derive from our brain states. And I can go on for that evidence if you want me to. No, no, brain state. I, all evidence of brain states is here, irrelevant here. Um, well, it, it, it's very relevant because what the mind is a so, so no, the, because, if, because to assume that is to just assume that the law of identity only exists within the mind. But again, I've already I've already proven the law of identity will exist irregardless of the mind's existence because the mind relies on the law of identity to exist. But then I explain that it doesn't really rely on the law of identity to exist. It's just how we classify these objects, the mind, for example, and, uh, and the brain, for example, right? So it's, 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 it and would I've be already, fallacious. I, I'm aware of what you're saying. You're talking about um, our understanding of it is only existent upon that, right? I mean, you can't talk about anything other than your, ex than your understanding of something. You can't talk outside your conceptual scheme. You can only talk within your conceptual scheme. Um, again, uh, even if you're saying that these that concepts only exist within the mind, it, it's basically just ad nauseum at this point. The mind does rely on the law of identity to exist. It's not just a But norm. how, though? I mean, you're just making the assertion, though. You're not really showing no, how it is. Any assertion against it is also reliant upon the law of identity. But you can still use the law of identity to prove whether it exists objectively or subjectively. You can use the law of identity to prove whether or not the law of identity exists subjectively or subjectively. Is that what you just said? Objectively or subjectively. So I can use yeah, a law of identity. I can use a law of identity, right, to show if it exists um, independent of the mind or dependent of the mind. Yeah, and if and if there's an assertion that says that the law of identity exists um, dependent upon the mind. Then um, that's like saying if the if the um the mind didn't exist, the law of identity wouldn't exist either. Yeah, exactly. But I can show that through the empirical stuff that we have. Can you prove? Wait, so you have proof that the law of identity would cease to exist without us? Yeah. Well, I have what the best type of I mean the best type of evidence that we have <clears throat> related to neuroscience and psychology. Yeah. No. Neuroscience also relies upon the law of identity, though. They all, okay. Yeah, I, I you can what still use it. What, what you're talking about is our understanding of the law of identity, not the, the law of identity itself. But you can't talk about the law of identity independent of your contextual scheme. So by definition, like, for example, X is defined okay. within your conceptual scheme. E e Any even, if you say, even if you say that the law of identity only exists as a concept, um, if you're defining a con if you're if you're defining concepts as only existing within the mind, then the law of identity would not fit the definition of a concept. So, the, if well, you define the law of identity yeah, as a concept, the then you would have to use it as an Aristotelian or or, or Platonic concept rather than the um, type of concepts that you're using. Mm, no, you don't have to. You can easily see how the law of identity is something that we assert, right, epistemically. And then, therefore, we can see that derives from the mind. I mean, it's not only you, something. It's not said, only something that we assert. It, we just happen to also assert it because we have an understanding of it. The law of identity. Yeah, still, our understanding comes from, from our neurology, though not necessarily yeah. that it's. I'm mind. not saying that our understanding isn't reliant upon neurology, but the law of identity isn't reliant upon neurology. Neurology is the, reliant upon being itself. But then again, so no, it's that's reliant the, upon the law of identity. But then again, though, that's still an assertion with no evidence, right? If you're saying that it it's, exists it's outside... It's not an assertion with no evidence. It's self-evident. Just because something's self-evident doesn't mean it's objective. I, I never said that, that something being self-evident is objective. You said it's an assertion with no evidence. Yeah. Which kind of so, implies so, so that, the, would have been, that, that if it would have been true... It, that implies that if it would have been true, that it would have been objective. And then when I said it was self-evident, you said something being self-evident doesn't mean it's objective. I no, never the, said... The, I never said that... But I said it, and that's why um, neurology relies on being neurology. It wait, is wait, wait. So the proposition, though, the proposition is, it is the law of identity exist ex exists outside the mind or inside the mind, right? And you asserting that self-evident is not any way solving the answer of it being objective or subjective. All you're claiming is that it's just self-evident. That's why I'm saying that it doesn't doesn't show anything. 
No, I never said I never said that it is objective because it is self evident. I know, but it's I know. Self evident, but what... however, is the properties that 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 make it objective. Okay, Th then, things can, like existing can, can outside you... of the mind. Right. You will, that you that is a property on. of the law of identity that is self-evident, and that's why the, the law of identity is objective. Okay, so can you explain that one more time? Okay. <clears throat> I never said that the law of identity was objective because it is self-evident. I know. However, I did say... Yeah, yeah, I know. You just told me to re-explain it, right? Yeah, so I was re-explaining it. What I said was that the law of identity, the properties of the law of identity that would make it objective are self-evident. I'm not saying I'm not saying that it is self-evident thus it is objective. I'm saying the properties that would make something objective um exist um and self-evidently and thus the law of identity is objective. So, just cuz you understand the properties of the law of identity, how does that how does that have anything to do with the claim is the law of identity objective or subjective? Okay. You misunderstood what I said again. <clears throat> what I said was, the, the, there are properties of the law of identity that would fit the definition of being philosophically objective. Wait, one second. Those properties Can do I, exist. Sorry, sorry. They Can I mention something real quick? Can I mention something real quick? My bad. Sure. Sorry to cut you sure. off real quick. I, I just want to mention, the law of identity, though, is a, just, is a property in itself. It's just one of the three laws of logic. I, I, you're, yeah. why, it seems like you're treating it as something like partial or something like Bro, like in in like it's like a couple of things combined. It's just the the idea that x equals x. Yeah, I'm aware of what the, the law of identity is, and it's not the idea. It is that x equals x. Well, the idea yeah, is, well, it is an idea. Identity, so, well, it is an idea. <laughs> um, it's more fundamental than ideas. Well, then, okay, so, but if you say that, the, then the only thing the only thing that that could be called an idea in this sense is our understanding of it. So, just like, so it's so, just like it's just like omnipotence, right? You you can't say that omnipotence is an idea because that would mean it would rely upon being an idea. Okay, so the here's only the problem. thing that is the idea of omnipotence is our understanding of it. Okay, so here's the problem with with what you're saying, right? If you're just saying that, well, there's a law of identity, right? Then it's our understanding of the law of identity, right? Then you run into an actually bigger issue here, right? So, for example, I can conceptualize atoms, right? And therefore, I yeah. can find evidence of of our interpretation of atoms, right? We can associate mass to an idea, right? But in terms of the law of identity, there's no evidence of its mass existing in the universe. We can't associate its mass to idea. So therefore, it, even when you say it like that, it still breaks down. What does it have anything to do with what I said? Well, because then you said that there's a law of identity, then there's our understanding of the law of identity. Yeah. So then, I'm therefore... Saying, I'm not it, saying that... Um, well, Wait, wait, well, wait. The reason, let me, the, let me the just... reason that's that's a false equivalency is because mass is not more more fundamental, so it can exist conceptually without without just being an understanding, more fundamental than ideas. So we can't actually call the law of identity itself an idea. We can't even call it a law because it's more fundamental than that. But we Again, call it the law of identity anyway because that's our understanding of it. And then, but to, but then that's what is what is the argument? The argument is like dude, there's no really uh, substance behind that claim. No, because all those things that we're calling it are are, are reliant upon the law of identity. Exactly, but uh, the law of identity though is just our way of classification thing, class, classifying things based on the pragmatic theory of truth. Okay, I've already explained that. Um. Just because we use it to class and classificate things, doesn't mean that it only exists within classification. Well, again, if you if you if we know that we can only say things within our conceptual scheme, it's impossible for you to say, well, yes, it's in our we can classify it, but yet it's like somehow like it's somehow supernatural unless you show some type of evidence, right? Some empiricism. That it's it, as that it exists in the way that like a tree a tree's mass. There doesn't have to be like empirical evidence that proves that the law of identity exists outside of the mind, because it's because wow. the properties of existing outside of the mind that the law of identity has are are self evident and they don't require empirical evidence to but exist. But the fact that you're saying it's self evident is orthogonal, right? Because that's not really attacking the main issue of it, if it's objective or subjective. Okay, okay. what's what's the issue I've, then? The, the issue is, is the law of identity something that exists inside the mind, so it's mind-dependent, or is it outside the mind, mind-independent?
Yeah, I'm aware, and it are, and I, I just said that it has that the properties that the law of identity have that would allow it to exist outside of the mind are dependent. I mean, are self-evident. But it being self-evident again is not, not doesn't entail its objectivity as you said okay. earlier. But, oh my gosh. That what I said, what I just said, is that the properties that would allow it to be objective exist self-evidently. Okay, so the, you said the properties that allow it to be objective. What, is, what does that statement mean? Okay, that means, okay, you're, you're, you're aware of what a property is, right? Yeah, you are. Okay. Um, for something to be objective, it must have the properties of an objective thing, right? For something to be objective, it just has to, as it, for something to be objective, it has to have a property outside the mind. That's by definition what, what a okay. property is. Okay, so we've got that down. Okay. So if something has properties outside of the mind that aren't relying upon the mind, right? Something is objective? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so the law of identity has properties outside of the mind that are self-evident, right? Okay, wait, 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 right there, right there. When you said that. Self-evidency is just our confirmation using our subjective opinion, right? That that nothing that that does not in that no, does so, not prove something being self evident property. doesn't rely upon us to be self evident. How can you say something is self evident without us justifying it being self evident? Doesn't make any sense. Okay, our, our justification also relies upon the law of identity, which we claim to be self evident. Okay, self evidence relies upon the law of identity as well. Yeah. Exactly. So you're, we're born with innate ideas. This is not like anything. Okay, uh, those innate ideas thing. also rely upon the law of identity. And no, so do we. they don't. No, no, no. The yes, law of they identity do. is just one of the innate ideas that we have. No, it's not. The law of okay, ideas are, are less fundamental than the law of identity because the concept of ideas relies upon the law of identity. Dude, dude, but here's the, the problem: is that you're not, you're just, you're not going, you're going around the point here, right? So the idea is that. And the law of identity itself is one of the epistemic norms that we have. In just like the law, just like the the, the self, okay. right? The idea that I'm, we have an ego. I'm aware the idea of what that... you're about to say. It's not just wait, an wait, wait. Can I? Can norm. I? Fin... Wait, can, yeah, can I know. I, can I, can I, can I'm I, just I... saying you have said this point several times, so no, I'm no, no, just going to no, go ahead and address it again. No, but here's the problem. Though. I don't think like you're like I. I don't think you're like appreciating the full point of this, right? Like the idea is that whether the the DNA ideas from evolutionary processes, right? Is that that hasn't that doesn't show just because it's self-evident just because we're born innately with it doesn't mean that it exists outside the mind no uh, that's that's not what i said i never said that it was self-evident because it is an innate idea i said that it is self-evident because innate ideas and the mind itself are reliant upon it okay so and let me ask you a question is the law of identity self-evident yes Okay, so therefore, uh, it, it, therefore, that the mind confirms its existence, right? No, no, the mind doesn't have to confirm its existence for it to exist. How can self our, under our understanding, our mistake. understanding of the law of identity, is confirmed by our by, by um its self evidency? Okay, but you need a mind to make something self evident, though. You don't need a mind to make something self evident. Self evidency doesn't doesn't have to rely upon the mind to exist. How? How is that possible? How can someone claim to be self? How can someone claim to have an axiom that's self-evident without a person being there to claim it? This makes no sense. I'm not saying they have to claim it. They don't have to claim it for it to be true. But self-evidency is a claim. Yeah, I'm aware of that. It's a claim that a person doesn't necessarily have to make. Yeah, you don't have to make the claim, but it's still a claim fundamentally. Yeah, and it's a claim that doesn't rely upon the mind to exist. And how do you, and have again, you have. You don't have any empirical evidence that that's the case, but I have empirical evidence that that, that, that the opposite is. The no, case. you 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 don't have empirical evidence that that is the case. You just have empirical. Well, can can, uh, I, can I can I present it? Okay, you're just gonna you you're gonna go over the epistemic norms and the innate ideas. That no, you I'm get. not. How, well, how are you gonna tell me what I'm gonna say before I say it, bro? I'm not tell. I'm I'm just asking you. I, that was a question. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go just like to how destruction in 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 uh in brain states or brain morphology right leads to reduction in consciousness therefore asserting a pretty good reasonable argument 
that uh, that mind derives from the brain, which means removal of the brain or the subject would be removal of any concepts derived from the mind. Okay. <clears throat> These um concepts derived from the mind, right? Mm -hmm. They um don't necessarily include the law of identity because they are reliant upon the law of identity. Yeah, but you keep saying that, but you're not really asserting. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, you can you can continue to say that I'm not like that. I'm like dodging your points, but I think you just keep making points that are refuted by the by the law of identity itself. Your <laughs> refutations, or They're, both my refutations really and your points, are relying upon the law of identity. And every yeah, but I I said before, remember, you can use the law of identity to say something is objective or subjective. So you asserting that I'm using the law of identity is again or is irrelevant to the point. Yeah, I'm aware. I'm just saying that um saying saying that um you're saying that it only exists within the mind, right? I'm gonna get back on track. Um but it has yeah. the properties of existing outside of the mind. I didn't say that. Because the mind relies upon the law of identity to exist. No no no. Again, again, again. The the I the, the law of identity is an innate idea, right? A priori in the mind, right? And okay. I have, again, and I, and I can give you, you know, and I already gave you the evidence that mind is derived from the brain, right? So assuming those are true, then you would need to assert some empirical evidence that concept exists outside the mind. If you can't do that, okay. then there's not really an argument here. I, I've already went over how the only thing that's an innate idea is the fact that the law of identity only exists or, no, the law of identity is not what exists as an innate idea. The only thing that exists as an innate idea is our understanding of the law of identity. And the law of identity itself exists independently of that, and independently of the mind, because the mind relies on it. The so you mind, can't say that... The mind doesn't rely on the... The mind doesn't the mind rely, on, the rely upon the law of identity to exist. No, it doesn't. Okay, the, the brain archaic. relies upon the law of identity right. to exist. No, it doesn't. Okay, can you say a brain is a brain without it being a brain? If I say a brain is a brain, I'm asserting my epistemic norms in evaluating what the knowledge of the brain is. I'm not saying that the mind is somehow dependent on the idea, of the, the identity, the law of identity, right? So there's a okay, difference. Okay, you, you danced around my question, right? I didn't. I, I answered it no, straight no, on. No, no. You you talked about our understanding and shit. Like you just you, asked you you about just, some, No, you, you talked about something question. that existed in the mind. To um, you, no, I asked you if the brain was relying upon being a brain to be a brain, and you danced around it by um, talking about things that were just in the mind, saying yeah, um. No, I, I, no, 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 I really no, I, I'm 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 being very charitable. I did not dance around it. I, I'm what I said right is that when I, when we say that the brain is dependent on well the brain. Well, the brain has really come from the brain, but whatever. But we can just say the brain is. Okay, is you said brain. the brain does okay. come from the brain. No, 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 no. If when we say a brain is a brain, that statement right there is us asserting our classification of what a brain is and our its relationship to other objects. The law of identity is only our classification of objects and its relation to other objects. That's it. No, that's not that's not all the law of identity is. I've already explained to you that that's just our understanding of the law of identity and what we use it for. The law of identity okay. exists independently of the function okay, that you see, describe this is for. this is the claim what you're doing is begging the question. So you're trying to prove you're trying to show me that the law of identity exists outside the mind, but yet in your premises of arguing you're assuming that it exists outside the mind. That's begging the question. No, I'm not assuming that it's outside of the mind. You are. What proves it's outside of the mind is the fact that the that the mind is reliant upon the law of identity. See, you just did it mind. again. You just begged the question again. You just begged the question again. You How just, am I begging assuming. the question? Okay, so the proposition here. No, I'm not here assuming. It's the fact that the it's the fact that the brain a brain has to be a brain to be a brain. Correct. So it is relying upon the law of identity to exist. Okay, and I argued. That the law of identity can exist subjectively or objectively, but what we're talking about is whether it is objectively, it objectively exists. That's what that's what the proposition is, and you're asserting its proposition, right? When we're trying to prove the proposition I'm, by saying that it's, I, I, I'm client. asserting, I'm asserting the proposition of my understanding of it. The law of identity will exist irregardless of my assertion. Listen, listen. Well, here's 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 my point. Okay. Here's the problem, right? 
you're saying that the mind that you're saying that the mind is dependent on the law of identity, right? Yeah. Because the law of identity has properties outside the mind. But here's yes. the issue with that is that the proposition is you have to show that that is that is in itself true. So I begging, have. No, you haven't. You've just been begging the question. No, I'm not begging the question. The, the mind is relying upon the law of identity to exist, and thus it exists outside of it. See, it's again, pretty simple. It's, you're begging the question. You're assuming already that it's objective existence while you're trying to prove it's objective existence. I'm not just assuming it has an objective existence. I'm asserting that it has an objective existence because it has the properties of one. Okay, so can I ask, can, can, let me ask you a question, right? So, yeah. do you think so? You we can, you can come up with a bunch of. I mean, no, it's, that's that's even going way too far. Okay, number one. Okay, do you do you do you agree that everything you say exists within your conceptual scheme? Yeah. Okay, so therefore, so like literally, I can go through the syllogism right here. Okay, so so X is defined within your conceptual scheme. Therefore, removal of X would be remo removal of your conceptual scheme would be removal of X. So therefore, anything you say, including the law of identity exists objectively, comes from a subjective framework. So by definition, in itself, you can't even you can even say that it's uh, it's it's one hundred percent objective, right? You can you can even make that assertion because it all comes from a subjective framework. No, I, I've already went over this. The um. I, I don't have to define the law of identity for it to exist as X. The law of identity will exist irregardless of its definition. No. The law of identity, the only thing that, that relies upon it is my understanding of the, the law of identity. It exists irregardless of the definition of the law okay, of identity. Okay, well, okay. L literally, l we, got, we can run through this again, bro. Everything that exists depends on your conceptual scheme, correct? Yeah. So then every assertion that you make fundamentally exists on your conceptual scheme correct okay okay so that means you saying that the law of identity exists objectively fundamentally ex resists uh, exists in your conceptual scheme correct um bro you come on bro the like, law of identity, it fo the, it follows the law of the identity itself bro. No, yeah, dude, no, 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 you're, 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 you're running around the point, bro. You're running around the point. Come on. No, I'm not, I'm not running around the point. You're running around the point the same way that you think I'm running around the point by saying that the, the law of identity only exists as a concept in the mind. Okay, can, can I go, can I go through this again? Can I go through this one more time? As a can I, can I, upon the law of identity. Can, can I run through this one more time? Okay. Everything exists within your conceptual scheme. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Not, there? not everything, not everything. No. Whoa, 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 whoa. All the assertions whoa. that I make, I'll agree to that. Not everything. One sec. How can you say anything that is independent of your perception and your conceptual scheme? How can you How? say anything that's independent upon being the, the assertion that you're making? Everything comes from your epistemic norm and your perception. You can't say anything outside of that. It's impossible. It's completely Your impossible. epistemic norms and your perception... It have to exist upon the law of identity. Me saying that, oh me saying God, that dude. isn't isn't reliant upon those things. Well, me saying, oh, mind me, let me let me backtrack on that. Me saying that is reliant upon those things, but whether or not that's true is not re relying upon my mind. Dude, okay, again, no, no, no. Like this is a very, you have to appreciate this point here. Okay, everything resists. Everything exists dependent on your conceptual scheme. Everything you say is defined by your conceptual scheme. Okay, the law of identity that, doesn't def d doesn't rely upon those things. It doesn't no. rely upon concepts or my conceptual scheme. Okay, or again, upon yes, definitions. That, but that's the proposition you're trying to prove, though. Okay, saying that the law of identity exists outside the mind is our proposition we're trying to prove. But when in proving that you're saying that because the mind relies on the law of identity, that's in itself asserting that it exists outside the mind, which is a proposition you're trying to prove. That's why I'm saying it's begging the question. Now, to my argument about the conceptual scheme, I, I I need you to appreciate this point here. Okay, everything you say is defined within your conceptual scheme, your perception. Uh, your epistemic norms, everything is defined within your conceptual scheme. 
Okay, this, Jordy, this I, think is, you're just, a fact. I think you're just pulling an ad in all at this point. Like, no, this is a you're fact. You're going over the same point over and over that I've already debunked. No, you're not debunking it. You haven't even, you haven't even addressed the argument. You haven't addressed the argument. I have the addressed argument. the argument. No, Things like the haven't. conceptual scheme. Do not no. rely, like the the law of identity does not rely upon those things to exist. Only our understanding of it does. No, I've no, already no, no. explained that. That's a deep. No, no, no. That's my response to what? it. And you're yeah. responding the same way, saying I haven't responded in itself as ad nauseum. Because you have, because I, you haven't, you haven't. Uh, we, well, you went through the conceptual scheme argument, and then you stopped uh, because you realized you were caught there, and then you tried to deny that you can. Then you tried to deny that everything is, is, exists with no. the conceptual scheme. So no, because no, you worded wait, it wait, different. Wait, you worded wait. it slightly differently the second time. First, no, the first I time didn't. you said all of my assertions exist wait, within my conceptual scheme. Wait. The second time, I thought you were going to say the same thing, but you reworded it and said everything instead. And I'm not going to agree that everything exists within our conceptual scheme. Okay. Because how can the law you, of identity and, and then, does not have to. Hold on, hold on. How can, then I need you to show me how you can say anything that's outside of your conceptual scheme. Show me okay, right now. Can you show me that you can say anything that doesn't rely upon the law of identity? See, now you're not even answering my question. You just asserted another question. No, so, no, I am I am answering your question by giving you the same analogy using my stance. No, bro, bro. I just want to, I just want to, I just want to your own logic me. against you. No, bro. I just want you to show me. Show me that you can say something that doesn't rely on your conceptual scheme right now. I'm not saying I. I'm not saying I can say anything that doesn't rely upon my. Okay, scheme. okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Saying wait. that the law of identity exists outside of the mind, do, like the law of identity existing is outside reliant, of the mind, does not rely is upon you saying it to be true. Yeah, no. If you say the law of identity exists outside, if you say the law of identity exists outside the mind, you are saying that within your conceptual scheme. Right, which is fundamentally subjective. I, I am so, saying that within my conceptual scheme, but the law of identity. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, there. Perfect, of... perfect, no, perfect, no, no, perfect. No, you again, just said again, it. Me, you just me said saying it. that. Okay. No, I, I'm aware that me saying that does rely upon my conceptual scheme. Then therefore, but whether it's or not it's subjective. no, hold on, Jordy, hold on. Whether or not it's true does not rely upon my me saying it. No, bro. So you just admit. No, no, no. You just admitted yourself that it's fundamentally subjective because it relies on. Your no, that's not what scheme. I said. I did. I, I, I specifically said that me, it being true that. does not rely upon me saying it. So your point is fundamentally flawed. No, bro. No, no, no. You're, I think. I think you're caught on this one, bro. Like, like. No, I'm definitely not caught. I think that you're caught, and you're saying I'm caught because you think that lowers my morale. No, I, I, I haven't even disrespected your intelligence or anything. I, I'm, I'm just simply saying on this one, Nick, you, you, you can't escape this, this point here. The point is... Okay, saying, I've, already, I've already debunked the points. So whether or not you think I'm escaping it is irrelevant. Listen, do you want to ask somebody else if you think you debunked the point? Do you want to ask somebody Yeah, else? you can ask somebody else. Sure, sure. So anybody okay. want to jump in and say? Um, okay. I'm being real. I don't think anybody else can pull this. What? Let Turbo speak. I don't. I don't think Turbo is friends with anybody here, so we'll just let him go. No, he, Turbo's my literally my apprentice. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that, that. oh good. okay. Uh, Kira, All yeah. right, how about Kira, Kira then? Uh, Kira's not friends with Kira. Anybody. We already know what Kira's gonna say. Jesus, don't ask that. Kira might be biased against me, but I'm not. Kira sure. Kira is biased against you. God, I saw what he's typing earlier. Okay, well let's see what Kira has to say. Or what about Pi God? Pi God, do you have an opinion? You don't know these niggas. <laughs> Seth, why don't you have an opinion first? Yeah, you yeah, Seth. It. You know, you know why I don't do that. Well, I know <laughs> why you don't do it, but I want you to like actually have like. Too bad. It, no it's, noodles. Do you want to go uh, ahead and um, assert whether or not you think I? I, I, no, I would like. I would, I would say noodles is biased time. too. No. I am not biased. Don't you ever okay. feed me that crap. Uh, you cannot prove I'm biased. No. I don't. I. Let's no, see, no, let's no, see no, if no. Pygod will answer I like question. Jordy a lot, so don't you dare say that I'm by it. What do you mean? He's called you retarded before. To be, okay. to be fair, he, he may have like indirectly God. called me retarded, but that doesn't mean I like him anymore. Okay, we're just gonna go to Pygod, because Pygod's been watching the whole thing. Okay? Oh my god, he's not you even relevant. Pygod just, like, abandoned he's typing. Pygod Pi God has debated this before, apparently. I don't know. That's what I was hearing. Well, well we, can, we can ask Giorgio as well. Probably doesn't give a fuck. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I comprehended this one. Okay. Jordan doesn't speak. Noodles, no. I, I, Shut up. I understood no. what the law of identity was from what Parrot oh, has described God, it to me. That's like having Every Arrow day. come in and say, like, what he thought. Stop. <laughs> no, no, it's not, because I actually do understand what the law of identity is. I have no that's idea. That's not what I meant. <laughs> 
What did you mean? We're just gonna He's have high god comment. You, it, have is, it is, it is angry. So you already know what I'm gonna say. Cause I already told you I was gonna say. Okay, well we don't know what Pi God's gonna say, so we're just gonna go with what she said. Oh my God! Why does Pi God know anything? Because the most neutral, <laughs> neutral person in this chat. But <laughs> what does it mean he he's like means anything though? Like doesn't mean he, he has doesn't a, like a valid opinion. The law of I like this in you, Pi. I'm just saying. So like, how would you okay, be I have so no so idea if you're about. Jordy, repeat what you're saying. Like um. If Naya was like stuck on the question or something, like what was it? Oh hey, yeah. Um, so, so I told idea. him. I told him that I repeatedly debunked his okay. point, and um, he said uh, he said no, you didn't, and I said yes, I did. And he said, do you want to ask somebody else if you debunked my point? And I said, yeah, sure. Okay. So Pi, what do you think about him debunking his point? So can I assert my point just in case, like you know, just to remember? No, you're not allowed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. Go ahead, and then I'll assert my debunk to it. Yeah, so the idea is that he's saying that he knows 100% that the law of identity is objective, right? So then anything that he says within, anything, anything that he says comes from a conceptual scheme that he holds, right? Every single thing is defined within his conceptual scheme. So therefore, even the statement, the law of identity is objective, is fundamentally dependent on your conceptual scheme, which is fundamentally subjective. So therefore, okay, it's it's it kind of self, uh, it's kind of it's self uh, evident ruins. Yeah, no, no, that's self evident. It's no, self contradictory so. is what he's trying to say. Okay, yeah. what what I, what I said as a debunk was that the only thing that exists within our conceptual scheme that is relying upon our, uh, upon our conceptual scheme is our understanding of the law of identity. And the law that uh, the law of identity exists independently of it because our conceptual scheme relies on being our conceptual scheme to be the conceptual scheme. So it is relying upon the law of identity to exist. Nah, oh, shit. <laughs> but see, that right there, though, it, is it, it's begging the question. But... It's not begging the question. It's a valid debunk. So, whoever I'm away from my god. I'm curious to see if I got just, Yeah, mute, please. If you're not Jordy or not. Well, I want to talk to you something relevant, though, can I? You want to, what do you want to talk to me about? You want to suck my car? I want to talk about to how sex? cute you are. Yeah. I'm going to lick you and pee. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 yeah, People in Cancer Station are idiots. <laughs> oh my god. I was about to say it was going in a circle, and then Jordy actually came up with the proper counter to Nye's argument, but then Jordy just now moved backwards. Did he move backwards with his new premise or something? Like, he was describing the past? Like, what do you mean by that? That, that was the same thing that he said, yeah. Pygon. How strong is Pycon? Yeah, I've been saying the same thing. Same he both have basically been saying the same thing. Yeah, so it hasn't that, changed that much. Pygon heard it wrong the first time. Okay. See, what Kira's oh. saying, like, that's, that's the point. Yeah, so... He's, it's, he's begging the question because he's using the law no, of We've already established that Kira's biased against me. He's, he started out. <laughs> yeah, don't. He started don't, out no, no, don't, don't, don't let Noodles he's, speak either. Shut up, Noodles. God. I mean, you can Kira, call me biased. Kira started, but I actually out, know Kira started out his thing by asking me a question. So he obviously wasn't basing this, this off of what we said, but rather what he thought. And also basing it off of um the fact that he hates me. But uh, <laughs> Kira also said during the debate up, that uh, he doesn't really understand Nye's position. Quiet. I'm not referring. Uh, I'm just saying. I'm gonna mute him. Shut yeah, up. Shut up. God. Uh, Noodles is just saying that, that Kira said himself. That I he know, doesn't understand but he shouldn't. He shouldn't be in the convo verbally. Like. <laughs> okay. Okay, you guys yeah, can Noodles, continue. Go are, ahead you, and are you continuing now, or what's going on? He's the one it's who ended. wanted to ask people if they thought that it was a valid debunk. Okay. And then... Like I so so. Oh my god. Go ahead. I I told him he was using ad ad nauseum because he kept repeating the same point. He thought it I looks, wasn't properly responding to the like point. Noodles, Move. you need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut up. Oh my god. Shut Move up. Yourself. Like please, God. Um, so it looks like it's a mixed uh, position. So just continue. Yeah. So again. Well, the thing, if, the thing if, is, if, I told him he was using ad nauseum, and he's gonna con continue using the same point. No, 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 but the problem, the problem is, it's, the problem is, like, the, the problem is that you are not appreciating that it is, it is, like, there is no way to show that any statement you make is outside your conceptual scheme. Oh my gosh, Jordan, I already debunked this. 
No, you didn't. Dude, this is something, bro. Yes, no, 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 seriously though, this this is something that philosophers haven't debunked at all. This is something that this has this is something that's e isn't even res no no listen listen because this is something that isn't even resolved. Okay, in modern philosophy, so I'm letting you know right now. This is I'm telling you right now. I know that you're not answering the question because whenever you say any statement, it's still dependent on your conceptual scheme. It's defined within that. So removal of your conceptual scheme is removal of whatever you're saying. It's, it's okay, I've, right already, now, I've already debunked that by saying that the only thing that's reliant upon my conceptual scheme and definitions is my understanding of the law of identity. Dude. Things like the conceptual scheme and um and my understanding of it and definitions in general are all reliant upon the law of identity to exist. So that's no, they're either. not. They're all relied on your conceptual scheme. No, not, they're not, not they're relying. Not on, no. No, the conceptual scheme is no. reliant upon the law of identity. So every philosopher is wrong. Yes. If every philosopher is saying what Come you on. said right then, then they are all wrong. Yes. No. I'll debate no, okay. every philosopher on that if I have to. Like So you'll debate Kant and you'll debate Hume and you'll debate you'll debate all every philosopher. Nietzsche. Yes. If and every if every philosophy is that if every philosopher believes that, then I will debate them on it, yes. But I even showed you. I, I even even in the first argument when I said that we don't there's no empirical evidence for it, and even the second one, the conceptual scheme one. There's like there's no way you you can refute that unless you assert that oh it already exists. I already have Therefore, refuted it, it, Jordy. So you can't say there's no way I can refute that. You haven't you haven't refuted it, bro. I promise you. I have refuted it, Jordy. I the conceptual I mean, I scheme is relying upon the law of identity to exist. It has to be okay. itself and, to hey, exist. Okay, it, okay, you don't you don't let's go off that. You say that, right? Okay, now. How, now, how do you know? Okay, that? Jordy, let's how do, do this. Do how do you whatever know that? you're about to say without using the law of identity. That, that, you, that, that's not even proving your point because I already said it exists this subjectively. This is the same thing that you're doing no, with me. No, you're me, saying me, everything that you're saying, me. all the assertions that you're making are relying upon your conceptual scheme to exist. Exactly. Well, everything exactly. that you're saying and all the assertions that you're making are relying upon the law of identity to exist. No, no, they don't. They rely on my conceptual Matter scheme. Fact, the conceptual scheme itself also relies upon the law of identity to how? exist. And how? So how? More how? 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 No, how? 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 Because the because the conceptual scheme has to be itself. See, or else right there. The wait, wait, wait. That wait, 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 right there, right there. Okay, right there. You said yes. I, I, I know what you're about to say. You, my the, my assertion relies upon my conceptual scheme. You're right, but my assertion yes. using the law of identity is not my not the law of identity itself. It's my understanding of the law of identity. And, and it, it isn't relying upon my assertion to be true. And your I've already debunked that before, Jordy. And, and the understanding of your of the law of identity exists within your conceptual scheme, so you're not getting around the point. I I have already gotten around the point. No, you haven't. You're still stuck. Yes, in the I same have, Jordy. No, you Jordy, I've already bro. debunked you a ton of times. Listen, listen, I, 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 I'm not trying to be rude when I say this, but I really think you just need to read more on this, because I don't think you're appreciating the point. Okay, Jordy, I'm, I'm not trying to be rude, but anyone who's written about it and, and believes the same thing that you did, uh, I'll, I'll debate them on it, too. And you can bring whoever believes that to debate me on it. I'll debunk them as well. Um, I mean, do you, you want me, do you want me to, like... That, that the only thing you, you're doing right now is making ad nauseum on a point that I've already debunked. It's not, not ad nauseum, because you're not actually debunking the point. You're really... You're really I am actually debunking the point. All you do is reassert your own points as a, um, as a okay. way of saying do I you, haven't debunked do, do you know why someone would reassert their own points? Yes, you know I know why someone that? would reassert their own points, because Wait, they think that they're valid. The points no, no, themselves. No, 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 that's not why. That's not why. That's not why. I don't receive I some of my points because it's valid. I read some of my points because the other opponent isn't attacking the actual point. That's why I keep reading. I am attacking the actual point. No, you're not. What you're saying is that my point relies upon the conceptual scheme to be true. Everything. My assertion may rely upon the conceptual scheme, but whether or not it's true does not rely upon it. No, because it does. The law of it identity does. Because the very idea of in, no, the law of identity exists on the your law conceptual scheme. You can't oh get out God. of it. The conceptual scheme only exists because of the law of identity, so that's not true. Okay, okay, wait, 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 right there. How do you know that? Because the conceptual scheme has to equal itself to be true. But you say that within your what? Conceptual scheme. Which yes, means it all derives from your say, conceptual Me scheme. saying that... Me saying that, and it all, and my assertion existing within the conceptual scheme, 
doesn't requ- doesn't mean that it isn't true just because it only exists within yeah. it. The assertion you, itself you can say any upon sentence, it. but you whether can... or not it's true does not rely rely upon my conceptual scheme. You the law say... of identity is no. The conceptual scheme is true is true only because of the law of identity, not the other way around. Listen, dude, dude, you can say any sentence from here to the to the to the, like the rings around Saturn, bro. I'm telling you right now, you can't escape that this is all within your conceptual scheme. Every statement you say is all within your conceptual scheme. Even you saying that in my conceptual scheme is relying on the on the um, law of identity is in itself in your sub- subjective, subjective scheme. So therefore, you're not escaping it. You're just reasserting stuff that's already in your subjective your subjective um, conceptual um, experience. So it's, it's, you're not- Oh you're my not gosh, 40. I've already debunked this several times. Okay. My assertion and my reassertions may be relying upon my conceptual scheme, but whether or not they are true is not relying upon it, because the law of identity is the only reason that the conceptual scheme exists, because the law of identity fundamentally and mathematically has to equal itself for it to be used for anything. All of that is said within your conceptual and, scheme. And all of that that you just said is said within the law of identity. No, no. Yes, it is. Of okay, so use any oh, term yeah. that doesn't rely upon the law of identity. Dude, dude, just because you use the law of identity doesn't mean that it exists objectively. We already went over that. Oh my gosh, yes, and I've already debunked it. So why did you ask the question? Because you are saying that the because all the terms that you're using only exist because of the law of identity, and so does the conceptual scheme. Wait, sorry, say that. I said all the terms that you're using only exist because of the law of identity, and so does the conceptual scheme. No, no, no. Oh, no. I, I also thing. like to say not- that everyone in, in Fodder saying that um that uh, my argument's bad just because uh, my, like my argument of saying I would debate all of them is bad just because they um what's it called my, saying I would oh, debate scientists. them is bad because I can't because I can't debate them. I'm not saying bring in the people that are dead that asserted that claim. I'm saying bring in, bring in the people who are still alive that asserted the claim. All I'm saying is that him saying that a bunch of people said it is not an actual argument. That's just ad populum. No, no, no. It's actually, it's actually not because it's an appeal pop- to authority as well. I'm aware. Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. It's not appeal to authority. Okay. It is an appeal, appeal to authority. authority to say that something is no, true. No, it's not. Wait, said- wait, wait, man. The appeal to authority is saying that my proposition is true on virtue of the authority. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that there's people who've worked on this for as long as philosophy has began, and no one has solved this issue. So, to you think this, for you to think that you just somehow just just solved the issue by asserting that the law of identity is somehow objective without really finding how it's objective is completely asinine. Okay, the law of the law of identity is one of the three laws of logic that we happen to hold as epistemic norms, right? And we know that these are subjective because assuming neurology and psychology, we know that the mind derives from the brain and that elimination of the brain is elimination of the mind. We know that for, for number one. Number oh my two, gosh, Jordan, you know, these are all things. These are wait. things that I've debunked repeatedly. No, you haven't debunked it. You just I have debunked begged the them. question. Okay, That's literally again, done. It's going on ad nauseum so we can go to conclusions. You're making the same assertion over and over. Okay, I'm okay, the same okay, fine. Over. So we can go to the conclusion. That's fine. So, <clears throat> so here's the point. Okay, number one, the first ebook, the law of identity, any law of logic, any epistemic norm, is part. It, it does come from the mind. This is shown because all because the mind comes from the brain, and we know this because different. Uh, for example, if you if you destroy the brain, you destroy the consciousness as we know it. <clears throat> you could look at Finney's Gage as an example. Uh, so there's many there's many overwhelming evidence for that, right? The second thing is the argument from conceptual scheme. Everything you say exists within your conceptual scheme. So even if you assert that something is objective, what it's impossible for you to say that 100 percent because of the fact that it exists within your conceptual scheme. So that okay. so that would be my closing statements. As for his first part. I debunked it by saying that um, it, the the law of identity only doesn't only exist as a conception, like as a concept within the mind that is reliant upon the mind. The mind is reliant upon the brain, as he asserted, but the brain is reliant upon being the brain, thus is reliant upon the law of identity. As for his second point, he's saying that my assertion is re- reliant upon my conceptual scheme, which is reliant upon the mind. 
And I said, the only thing that, while my assertion is relying upon the conceptual scheme, whether or not it's true is not relying upon the, my conceptual scheme. The law of identity and its definition are not um, the law, the, my understanding of the law of identity and its definition may be relying upon the law, uh, I mean, upon the conceptual scheme, but the law of identity itself is not relying upon definitions, understanding, or the conceptual scheme, as all these things rely upon being themselves, thus they are dependent upon the law of identity. Okay. Fuck. Oof. Who's judging this oh one? Oh my lord. This is wild. Uh, who's judging that? Huh? There's not going to be a judge um, from this chat. <laughs> you don't think so? No, I'm leaving it there. <laughs>